Welcome, everybody, dear friends from Tech and Law TV. Uh, welcome to our session uh, today: uh, data protection uh, bound out of the EU. What happens uh, 2022? What to expect uh, in the next year? Uh, you probably heard already the news uh, of today of Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who said he's going to. Um, close Facebook and Instagram in the EU because of data protection. And now uh, we have uh, as one of our guests, uh, Professor Kugelmann, who is responsible for Mark Zuckerberg um, leaving the EU. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I very much welcome uh, Professor Dieter Kugelmann, who is the state commissioner of one of the German uh, Bundesländer and uh, so responsible for data protection uh, uh, in uh, Germany. Uh, and also my partner, Caroline uh, Monsees, who is a data protection expert. And uh, we want to discuss today, um, uh, yeah, uh, an outlook, uh, what's going on in uh, 22, what to expect. I think with respect to questions, if you have questions, we only have 30 minutes, we try um, uh, We try briefly to comment to your questions. Otherwise, uh, don't worry, we will follow up with questions uh, after the session um, and send you a respective email. And we will also follow up with a um, yeah, summary of links because we are going to mention quite a lot of uh, statutory law and other laws uh, uh, so that you relax while you listen uh, and don't panic about all the news. We will summarize the news for you and make a nice package. So, topics of today. We talk about cookies, cookies reloaded, uh, what to expect in Germany and in the EU. We talk about Schrems 2, which is an old topic, uh, starting in uh, summer 2020. But now we are in a kind of enforcement mode and we have the first um, case law on Schrems 2. Um, we talk uh, about, let's say, the forecast uh, with all the new legislation which is coming. We have the Data Governance Act. We have the e-privacy regulation. We have the AI Act. There are so many things besides the e-privacy regulation. So um, lots of things uh, to be aware of. But now I stop talking. And I just would like uh, to know, uh, dear um, uh, Professor Kugelmann, Looking back, looking forward, uh, what are the hot topics uh, to your opinion? Well, first of all, I can thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, explain some perspectives of um, the German um, supervisory authority. Uh, in the last year, of course, we were coping with pandemia, with data processing in the framework of um, fighting uh, corona, fighting pandemia. Um, because uh, our health authorities um, have the data, but the question was who has the right to access it. Um, we uh, cope with the uh, apps in this context. Uh, so uh, that's uh, still, of course, uh, a topic, uh, an ongoing question, uh, because um, it's sensible data, health data, and uh, we, some of authorities need it uh, to work, uh, but some others um, are not entitled to use it. Um, and the other big topic last year, in my opinion, for uh, our context was uh, the cooperation of European authorities. The cooperation of the European data protection authorities starts to work better and better. We have a lot of cooperation cases. Um, there's a kind of routine which is um, implemented. Uh, but of course, we have uh, the, the, the critical ones uh, starting. In, we have a first case of coherence, a first case where there was a diverging uh, perspective of different uh, authorities and where the European Data Protection Board took a decision how to deal with the question. And I think uh, this is um, the way we'll go uh, on this year uh, in uh, further harmonizing, harmonizing the European approach harmonizing the European um, perspective for uh, the ap application of the, uh, the GDPR uh, by guidelines of the authorities, by more court decisions of the European Court of Justice, so that for the companies, for the enterprises, uh, 
there's a, perhaps the situation becomes clearer what to do and uh, what not to do. That's that sounds promising with respect to transparency and clear. But I must say, knowing our clients, um, it's 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 good and bad news at the same time that you cooperate better. To be honest, <laughs> but congratulations that you achieved this. Um, and let's say going forward, it's certainly much better for larger companies um, to have one single voice. Uh, in the EU and not this multiple concert of different views on same and complex things. And Caro, from your opinion as a data protection practitioner, what is uh, the hot thing uh, happening and in particular looking forward going on? I think Schrems 2 is still hot, so to say. It's not an old topic. I think it will last this year, especially the scope of transfer impact assessments, how to do data transfers. Um, that's a topic that's really important this year. Um, with that connected, I think, cookies and the question whether a consent can be used for cookies, especially in data transfer context. And uh, a third point would be, from my perspective, a lot of case law and privacy litigation. Um, for example, are consumer protection um, associations entitled to bring representative action? Um, that's a thing the European Court of Justice will decide. Um, and I would say, yeah, that are my three hot topics. Okay, uh, so enough to do from the data protection practitioner side, obviously, also in the, in the coming year. Now, uh, going to one of uh, the items we mentioned, cookies. I mean, it's a somewhat, let's say, known topic already, but uh, as uh, you are probably aware uh, or not, is that um, at least in Germany, um, there had been a new law, a transformation of um, existing laws uh, merged into the so-called Telecommunication and Telemedia Data Protection Act. Uh, some people limit this act to cookie, the new cookie law. Um, and the interesting aspect uh, here is we probably do not expect so many new things, but from the authority side, we have uh, two layers of authority. The first step, like placing the cookie and reading cookies, uh, the Federal Data Protection um, Data Protection Authority will be responsible. And for any other further processing, uh, like monetization of uh, the information you collect, it's again the, uh, the local data protection authorities. A question, um, Professor Kugelmann. Do you think this is a good idea? You, you said that cooperation is now better, but won't this add to the complexity that we have two layers of authority for a for phenomenon, which from our view is it's, it's one process? It will. Actually, um, my opinion, that wasn't a good idea. Finally, it's uh, uh, from a legal point of view, uh, the um, implementation of no directive. So um, this directive, uh, of course, concerns this first step. So placing cookies or placing other things on the uh, on the um, on the premises of uh, the customer. Um, so it has to be um, done by uh, by the federation. Um, but uh, actually, for the let's say side of the controller of the people um, using uh, placing setting cookies, it's complicated. But um, uh, on the other hand, uh, let's say this as uh, the authority, if you uh, do the right thing, if you place it legally, you, you won't have a problem at all. So um, my uh, message would be that um, here with this uh, different layers, uh, of course, uh, it's, um, let's say, a challenge uh, uh, to uh, cope with different authorities. But uh, on the other hand, um, uh, first of all, it's the responsibility of the controller to, uh, to try to uh, get along with uh, the legal situation. Yeah. And, and in order to do the right thing, as you said, uh, the German authorities actually, uh, they um, provided us with a uh, orientation, with a guideline, uh, quite substantial, uh, I think like approximately 20 pages guideline, how to use uh, this new law, how to interpret that law. We will translate this into English, and um, that will be one one item of our uh, link summary. And uh, Caro, 
with that basis, uh, will it be like easy for companies to just look into that guideline and said, okay, this is transparent, one, two, three, I know what to do. Um, or is anyone like uh, who already worked on cookies and privacy policies need to rework what they have done to some extent? But to be frank, I think it hasn't gained so much attention so far because it was published, I think, the 21st of December last year, so three days before Christmas. Um, so it's just people are just looking at it and it takes a time um, and it's not easy. No, it's quite an effort to install all the requirements. Um, and uh, yeah, but in the end, you have to, to read it and implement it. Okay. At least yeah. you try to. Yeah, but I assume, uh, Professor Kugelmann, that as you issued and provided that guideline, this will be then the basis for, uh, let's say, how, how you look on, uh, on the cookie issue. That's our way to proceed with the question, exactly. And it was our Christmas gift um, <laughs> last year. Uh, Good to know. Uh, <laughs> hope you're happy with it. So, um, no, uh, um, actually, the, um, uh, the guideline is really the, um, the guideline for all German authorities. And uh, finally, it's not really different from what uh, other European authorities uh, might think. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the core thing about it is um, that uh, setting cookies um, has to be fair in the sense um, that uh, the button uh, to reject has to be as big as the button to say yes. So yes and no have to be the same weight. It's an equal approach, approach of equality. And uh, it works, in my opinion. I've seen in the last days some websites where really you don't have to uh, click twice or three times to, um, uh, to reject. But uh, if you don't want the cookie, um, uh, or use it only to the technical one. It only needs you one, it takes you one click. And the other thing is uh, that, um, of course, it's uh, the necessity of consent. So uh, that's not really new. So we, that uh, we need the consent of the, um, the customers, of the user uh, users uh, for um, uh, going on the website. And um, I think um, it's perhaps more the, Question first of all, to know what is uh, on my website. So uh, which programs, uh, which uh, applications uh, really are run by the website so that you can inform. And the second question is uh, to design the website in a way that um, you really um, uh, get, uh, uh, get along with this uh, equal approach so that uh, you make it for the user as easy to say yes and uh, as to say no. So these are the two big points in my opinion. Okay. And I think there was one practical approach, maybe also for, for our listeners, um, like check the consistency between the cookie banner and the privacy policy. Um, I think that's a tip you should, you should yeah, um, check because consistency, we have often uh, seen that, that the banner says something else than the privacy policy, and that's easy to check. However, there might be other points I do not agree with, but uh, that's my lawyer perspective, of course. And in the end, it's a guideline and it's not written law. So there is always a little bit uh, a way of interpretation, I would say. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's good to know. And uh, let's move now uh, to Schrems 2. Um, uh, thank you uh, both for the insight uh, with cookies and how to handle that. Now we have also Schrems 2. And here we have the new standard contractual clauses and the decision incorporated in clause 14 and clause 15, which makes it a little bit more easy on the surface because you have the standard contractual clauses, but still the complexity of that uh, milestone judgment, I would say, is, uh, is still there. Uh, and my question to you, um, dear Professor Kugelmann, you had uh, last year a kind of proactive, in, proactive initiative where you send out uh, questionnaires um, to companies uh, uh, asking for status quo of implementation of the Schrems 2 judgment. What was, how, what was your findings? Uh, positive, negative? Well, well uh, let stand. First, uh, first finding is um, that uh, at least uh, the companies we asked, uh, they deal with the question. Uh, they do something. 
Uh, and uh, you have said it's uh, really a, a, a question of, uh, of great complexity. So uh, uh, there's normally no easy answer. Um, and uh, those uh, companies that deal with it, what we see on the other hand is um, that uh, let's say 50% of the answers um, are uh, not um, sufficient in the sense uh, uh, there are some companies uh, who don't know what they do. They don't know that there is uh, data transferred to uh, the US. Of course, we have Google Analytics, but no, we have, don't, have, don't have any problem with data transfer to the USA. That's the message of some of them. So um, uh, the um, awareness of uh, what really is and to what extent uh, it is in uh, data transfer, especially to the United States, uh, that's uh, still lacking. So uh, from our point of view, um, uh, that's quite good because uh, we don't get uh, to the point to um, really evaluate the, the individual data transfer. Uh, we stop at the first point, it lacks documentation. It lacks um, um, the awareness. Um, so first of all, we will say, just check that again. And because in, uh, the, the second step to say, now you know what you do, and now you can um, explain that uh, you have the standard contractual clauses plus some additional thing like pseudonymization or things like that, or encryption. I can, I can. I hear you. Uh, sorry, uh, so obviously that means the, thank you, the process gets stuck already at the data mapping, at the very first step, thinking about the guidelines of the EDPB about the six step plan. Step one is only data mapping, and then the finding is this is already a big problem, like Caro, like you said with the cookies. People don't know what's going on in the company. So my my finding would be facts, 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 fact finding is still a very important thing. And Caro, from your opinion, looking at Strands 2, uh, with our clients, we are dealing what is the most um, yeah, problematic areas? Well, the implement implementation effort is immense. So you need to assess um, on that basis every data transfer. You need to assess the legal basis, of course, and all what's what's um, what's what's the background of the data transfer. And that's a lot to do. And I'm not that sure whether all the authorities know what what they ask here for, because in practice it's really hard to do. Just imagine you have thousands of data transfers, and you need a transfer impact assessment for each of them, or at least for lots of them. So there's so much to do, of course, a lot of work. And I think often it's more there is a practical thing and the theoretical thing, and uh, we need to align that in, in the future. So then uh, to add to the, uh, I like you think that this transfer impact assessment, the assessment of the transfer is really, really uh, in practice, very hard to overcome. Uh, it's not something that you send out a questionnaire to the vendor and the vendor says, OK, I agree. You need to teach data protection law into different jurisdictions. And I would like to stress an, uh, um, um, another uh, subject here. The authorities here again provided us with very, very recent guidelines um, with respect to SRAMS 2, which is the assessment of um, foreign uh, applicable IT or uh, not IT um, uh, security laws. So we have a new memorandum by the German authorities, uh, a legal memorandum from a US professor uh, about Pfizer 702 and implications of US surveillance laws. And then we have from the EDPB, so um, a, a guideline or um, a legal memorandum concerning the situation in India, Russia, and China, explaining how um, yeah, data protection law is taken care of in these countries, and explaining a little bit like the possible clash between our data and the law going to that jurisdictions, and uh, how this the interplay with the local surveillance laws. Is this like um, for you from the authority perspective, is this something now you follow? Will this be your guideline for assessment or is it just like 
uh, well, I, I, I ask more openly, what is the purpose of these kind of legal memorandums the authorities, the European authorities provided? Well, of course, we were asked um, after the, the judgment of the Court of Justice in Luxembourg uh, from um, controllers, uh, what, shall, what can we do? We don't know the legal situation in different countries. And now US authorities uh, want from us that uh, we um, assess uh, the surveillance laws in India. Well, we're not able to do that. So our idea was uh, to um, give um, uh, advice uh, and help to um, uh, the controllers at first. So if you uh, transfer data to the United States, to India, to Russia, to China, to take the big players, um, this is the, the situation of surveillance law in these countries. And um, that's uh, um, the guidance uh, in the direction of what additional measures can I take as um, an exporter of data um, for my data transfer. And for us as authorities, on the other hand, um, um, if we take really a decision concerning one controller um, and one or two certain data transfers, then we do it on a case-to-case -case basis. So these uh, general expertise we have, this uh, general legal um, guidance um, is helpful. But of course, uh, if we take the concrete case, then um, we have uh, to go really in depth in um, in the matter so this is uh, for us then more uh, let's say uh, a background information helping um on the for our case-to-case -case basis so what i hear is it's really hard to execute <laughs> that's that's the thing i hear <laughs> that's that would be my next question about uh, how can we practically execute this because if you digest for example the memo concerning us law and the question around pfizer 702 and now uh, the result that even a situation when you host your data in Europe, that via Pfizer 702, via the US mother company, you can have access to the data in Europe. And even the next step, that was a big surprising point for me. If you are a EU, let's say company, having a subsidiary in the US that the same uh, let's say mechanics uh, can um, uh, be triggered that via 700 uh, Pfizer 702 via your US subsidiary you may have access to data stored in the EU. For me, the result would be you cannot store any data anywhere. We have to go back to paper. Uh, uh, how? My my question is: Aren't we going too far? With with no 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 no, there must be a solution. Well, first of all, uh, this expertise of um, Professor Vladek um, is the expertise of Professor Vladek. So uh, um, it's, uh, of course, uh, not um, uh, binding for uh, us as authorities. Uh, but uh, uh, we know from the, for the yes situation, we know quite exactly what the European Court of Justice has said. And there was a lot of um, information about Pfizer 702, the executor executive order 12 triple three etc uh, we have a task force on that um, but um, we wanted to uh, well um, uh, explain the situation what is the scope of application of FISA 702 so uh, American perspective of an American lawyer uh, what is uh, the scope of application and what is perhaps not the scope of application uh, of uh, the surveillance law um, because um, uh, in, uh, a, a, in a concrete case, we have to deal with, uh, with all those questions. And um, there um, uh, is, of course, the problem, and that's what also uh, is a part of this expertise, that um, in uh, the United States, uh, we have case law. Finally, we don't know it exactly now, and nobody can know it exactly now, because we don't know what the authorities really do. Some of them are secret services, so uh, it's not known. And uh, the second point is, if it comes before the court, then the American courts may take a completely different decision from what uh, is written down in the expertise. Um, and uh, well, uh, so it's, um, as you said, uh, Ms. Monsey, it's hard to execute, also for us, 
Because uh, if we say, well, uh, from our point of view, the American law is like this, uh, the, uh, the court in Chicago may tell us no. Not, uh, only, uh, not only the court in Chicago, <laughs> I think multiple experts uh, in the US and in the EU will say a different thing. So um, uh, thank you very much. There's one question uh, um, from the audience and that uh, is something I would like to give to you, Caro. Uh, and I know that it's uh, created nervousness uh, around our clients. It's the stop of Google Analytics uh, from the Austrian uh, High Court. Um, uh, and uh, it's not it's not addressed to Google, it's addressed to the controller using the tool. Does it mean that we now cannot use any tools anymore, which are US based? Is no. that what the court says? Yeah, no. So first of all, it's quite a complex decision. Um, and there will follow some decisions. So it's not the end of the decision making from the Austrian point. Uh, what we need to consider here with this decision is that the new SSCs, and I mean the SSCs from June last year, um, have not been considered. And the second thing, what was not part of this decision and what is quite relevant, I think, for the future is the IP anonymization mechanism. Um, the authorities have not said anything to that if that's a possible measure um, for security or not. Um, and so I would say keep calm, read all the decisions and there will come more. However, it has no direct impact, so to say, in other countries. So no, you do not need to stop all the tours uh, immediately. So that would not help too much. Having these uh, practical advice from you, Caro, thanks very much. Another question to you, uh, which I would like to stress is the role of the ECJ and upcoming uh, court decisions. Um, as far as I know, in the pipeline, there are several very important decisions uh, who might be looking forward 2022 have an impact. What is that? What is to expect there? Yeah. We talked uh, already about the question whether consumer agencies are entitled to bring representative actions. That's one major uh, thing we are waiting for. Then I think there are two more. The second is um, whether compensations under the GDPR um, include also non-material damages. That's a question which is open so far. And then there's a third um, topic or a third case, which will be decided particularly in Germany or relevant for Germany. Um, and it's, it is associated with the liability under the GDPR. So do we have an association liability for the entity as a whole or our German concept so far, do we have the liability only for the offender? And that's uh, quite a difference. And um, that's also the third decision, which will be um, really interesting. We're waiting for that. Anything to add uh, from your side, uh, Professor Kugelmann, with respect to important decisions in the pipeline? Mm, well, first of all, uh, just uh, allow me to uh, uh, tell about the guideline on Article 15, actually, from the, uh, from the board. Uh, there's still a consultation pro uh, pro procedure uh, ongoing. So um, the right uh, to uh, have my own data uh, fr from the controller, Article 15, is now concretized, which is uh, really relevant. Most of our cases, most of our complaints uh, from citizens uh, are dealing with Article 15. So, um, uh, and uh, there is also um, some um, European jurisprudence uh, ongoing, so waiting for, for a decision from the European Court of Justice on the, the right of the citizens, especially uh, on this right. Yeah, that's that's a good point. It's true. It's really relevant. Uh, many of our clients are dealing uh, with that as well. Having now uh, one and a half minutes um, uh, to go, like looking forward, not only 2022, but like the whole next decade with everything we have in place. We mentioned that the AI regulation, e-privacy regulation, uh, uh, Digital Market Act, Digital Single Act, uh, e-privacy whatsoever, um, uh, even new law on um, uh, digital products, our civil law had been changed recently, whistleblowing hotline, uh, um, uh, the directive hasn't been implemented in time, many, many, many things to do. Is it something which goes on like this in the same path or can we take some time to digest for the next I would say decade to implement all that. And do you think, um, uh, dear Professor Kugelmann, that uh, aren't we going too far there? Or is it naturally that now when analog goes digital, that we 
have all these rules at the same time to implement? Well, actually, we're really in the situation that uh, in the moment the rules are made. Uh, the rules are made. It's regulation uh, of, uh, well, things which have developed within the last uh, five years. But uh, at the end of this year, I uh, think we will have uh, a situation where all these European acts uh, will be in force, or most of them. And then uh, we can take a little, some breath together and uh, perhaps some beer uh, to um, uh, get along with it, because then um, we should uh, focus on, let's say, uh, topics. So what about health data? What about uh, advertisement? To get, a, get rules then out of this bundle of, uh, of laws, get rules for concrete data processing, because uh, we want that, we need that, but uh, we need it within a frame uh, according to law. I think this is a very good uh, closing comment. Uh, thank you very much. Take a breath, have a beer, uh, and uh, relax a little bit. Take time to digest everything which is coming like at the same time. Thank you very much, um, dear Professor Kugelmann, for being uh, here uh, with us. Thank you very much, uh, Caro, for participating in this session. Uh, thank you all for listening and uh, joining uh, Taylor Wessing's webinar session today. As I said, I will send out a summary of links. If you have questions, please uh, follow up with that via email. We are happy to correspond to your questions and uh, have a good evening, have a good day, wherever you are in the world. Uh, and that's what I find very fascinating. Data protection is the first global law, and we are now in a global community. So I say good day and good night at the same time. See you soon. Bye-bye.